Hey everyone, I'm Melissa, a university professor who loves to cruise and I love to talk ship. Today we're gonna to talk about cruise excursions and everything you need to know about them so you can have the best experience possible and not waste your money. So let's jump right in. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is a cruise excursion? A cruise excursion is essentially a planned activity or tour that you can take when your cruise ship is docked in the port. Now, of course, you can get off the ship and just walk around, but these are more structured activities. And they can range from things like guided city tours, hiking, snorkeling, or cultural experiences, even things like cooking classes or visiting historical landmarks. Excursions are usually offered by the cruise line or by independent companies, and they provide a great way to make the most of your time at each destination. So you basically have to decide when you get off the cruise ship, if you get off the cruise ship, because staying on the ship is an option. Do you want to get off the ship and explore on your own? Do you want to book a cruise line excursion? Or do you want to book an independent excursion? Instead of staying on the ship or wandering around aimlessly, cruise excursions give you a chance to immerse yourself in that local culture, try new things, and check out sites that you probably otherwise wouldn't see. A common question is, do I need to actually book an excursion or can I just wander around on my own? Again, this is a big question I hear a lot, and the answer is it depends, and it depends on what you want. You can do whatever you wanna do, but if you're the type of person who likes a little more structure and guidance, an excursion might be more up your alley versus just getting off the ship and wandering around. On the other hand, if you're a seasoned traveler, you like the freedom, you wanna explore, you like to walk, you like to interact with people, you might prefer to skip those organized tours, whether they're with a cruise line or independent, and just wander. Now, depending on the cruise port, some are designed to be more walkable. Some have beaches right at the port, so you don't need an excursion, like Grand Turk. And others, you need an excursion, because there's not really much to see or do within walking distance of the port. So doing a little research on your cruise port destination before your cruise is important in making this decision. You also wanna look and see how far the cruise terminal is to the city center. Because if it's far away, it's again, much more difficult to just get off and wander and have a good time. If you decide to get off and wander, things that you can do include hitting the shops, getting a bite to eat, getting a drink at a bar, or sometimes visiting a beach if it's nearby without having to sign up for an official excursion. However, if your goal is to experience something specific like zip lining through the jungle, or visiting an ancient ruin, or diving into a shipwreck, you probably want to book an excursion to ensure that you get that opportunity. But remember, even if you're just exploring out on your own, you still wanna make sure you plan ahead so you don't miss anything. What's it like taking a cruise line excursion? Full disclosure, I personally do not like cruise line excursions. I do take them sometimes, but they're not my favorite. And I'll tell you why in a moment. But what they are, cruise line excursions, are those that are organized by the cruise line. And that means they plan everything for you. You'll typically meet as a group with other people on your ship at a designated time on the ship on that port day, or sometimes they'll have you actually disembark the ship and meet somewhere in the cruise terminal area. From there, as a group, you'll head out together with a tour guide to an excursion site. Cruise line excursions are great because they're super convenient. They handle all the logistics for you from transportation, guides, tickets, all that stuff. You also have peace of mind of knowing that the cruise line is responsible for getting you back to the ship on time. And more on that in a moment because it's a very important distinction. But the downside, the reason I don't like cruise line excursions is because they start to feel a little bit like a cattle call. They feel like group travel because they are. You're often put with a large group of people. The schedule can be pretty rigid and say you get to a destination, it's not really interesting to you. You've seen it, you've gotten your pictures, you wanna keep it moving, you can't. You're stuck with their schedule and you can't move on until the group is ready to move on. But if you like structure, you like the ease of not having to worry about logistics and you are super anxious about the ship leaving without you and you want that peace of mind, cruise line excursions are a great option for you. If you are a first time cruiser or not very familiar with it, or you haven't cruised for a long time, booking a cruise line excursion, in my opinion, is the way to go. Now let's break down the pros and cons of booking directly through the cruise line. First, the benefits, convenience. It's super convenient, everything is done for you. Once you look at the excursion, you decide you wanna take it and you book it, it's pretty much out of your hands. The cruise line does everything from there. You also have that huge peace of mind of knowing that the ship will not leave without you if your excursion runs late. If you miss that return to ship time under any other circumstance, it doesn't matter. That ship will not wait for you. The one exception is if you are on a cruise line sponsored excursion and it runs late, they will wait for you. 
Quick caveat, if the excursion is running really late, hours late, the ship might not wait for you, but the cruise line bears the burden and responsibility of getting you to the next cruise port on their own dime. There's also quality control. Excursions offered by the cruise line are vetted, but I wanna add a little asterisk to that. So in theory, you can expect a certain level of quality and professionalism, but here's my little caveat. Vetting is kind of a loose term. You're not gonna be scammed or anything like that, and someone's not gonna take your money and run. They're vetted in that way, but the cruise line excursions don't really seem to do much vetting in terms of quality or customer experience. So just because a cruise line offers an excursion, that doesn't mean it's going to be a good one. So you wanna vet it yourself. Go online, read reviews, talk to other cruisers on social media groups, and make sure it is a good excursion before you book it. Here are the downsides to cruise line excursions. One is the cost. Cruise line excursions are often more expensive, sometimes substantially more expensive, than booking an excursion independently. A lot of times you can on your own find literally the same exact excursions offered by the cruise line, but doing it on your own and doing it at a much cheaper cost. Another downside is crowds. As I mentioned, it does start to feel like you're being herded like cattle. You will be part of a larger group and that can make your experience a little less pleasant and definitely less personalized. And there's also less flexibility. There are fewer options when it comes to choices. If you're booking a cruise line excursion, they can sell out kind of quickly. And when you're on the excursion itself, you're on that fixed schedule. So there's not that room for customizing your experience. Now let's talk about an independent excursion and what that is like. Booking an independent excursion means that you're not going through the cruise line. It means you're either on the day of the port visit, you're booking an excursion right there on site, or you're going online in advance and booking an excursion on your own. You're doing this through a third party or independent company or a local tour guide, and you're doing it on your own. So it makes it independent. Now, this option often is great because you have a lot of flexibility, you have a lot more options, it's cheaper, and you have smaller group size. For example, if you book a private guide or a small group tour, that's how I like to roll, you get to customize the itinerary based on your interest. I love booking private guides and private drivers because I like to pack a lot in, in one day. I don't like being stuck with a big group. If you have your own private guide or your private driver, you can spend as much time at each landmark as you want and you get to call the shots. Independent excursions offer that flexibility if you go the private or small group route. Now, just because it's an independent excursion doesn't mean it's still not a cattle call. There are still those that exist. So before booking an independent excursion, make sure you inquire as to the group size because you might still have that as an issue with independent excursions. Now, a great thing about booking on your own, if you do an independent excursion, they're almost always less expensive, sometimes significantly less expensive than cruise line excursions because you're cutting out the middleman. Now, an independent excursion does come with some pretty substantial risks. The most significant is that timing. If your tour runs late and you miss that return to ship time and the ship departs without you, you're SOL. The ship is not gonna wait for you. You're gonna be responsible for getting yourself to the next port of call and doing it on your own dime. So if you book an independent excursion, it's absolutely critical that you have great time management skills and you plan to return to the ship. In my case, I always come back two hours before the official return to ship time because I don't even ever wanna cut it even kinda close. If you do an independent excursion, you're on your own, so you make sure that you're on time. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of independent excursions. Just like cruise line excursions, independent excursions have their own benefits and downsides. First, let's talk about the pros. First is that lower cost. As I mentioned, independent tours are often significantly more affordable than cruise line options. You also have a much wider array of choices than those that are offered by the cruise line, which are pretty limited. You also have a great degree of customization. Often you can tailor the tour to your specific needs and interests and spend as much time where you want, when you want. And that is definitely the case if you book a private driver or a private guide. If you don't go the private route, you still benefit with an independent excursion of generally having smaller groups. In most cases, but not all, independent tours have far fewer people making for a more pleasant and intimate experience. Now let's talk about the downside. First is the big one, the risk of missing the ship. As I've mentioned a few times, that cruise ship will not wait for you if your tour runs late. Most independent tour operators, they know this, they're not gonna cut it close. They're going to schedule to return you back to the cruise terminal well in advance of your return to ship time. But ultimately, the responsibility lies with you to get back on time. If not, you're on your own. You also have trust and reliability. If you do an independent excursion, you've gotta do a little bit more vetting because there's not vetting done by the cruise line. 
You want to do research. You want to make sure that you're booking with a reputable company and that the tour is worth the money. You also have to invest time in more planning. You may have to arrange something like transportation or other logistics, which can be stressful if you're not a big traveler or you're not familiar with that particular port area. For example, an independent excursion might give you zip lining through the jungle, but they don't include transportation. So the onus is on you to find your transportation to the zip line location, and that can be stressful. Now let's talk about how and when to book excursions. For cruise line excursions, you can usually book directly through the cruise line's website or the app. It's super easy. Usually these are available even a year plus in advance. Once you book your cruise, they'll start trying to upsell you on excursions. And it is a good idea if you want to do an excursion through the cruise line to book that earlier rather than later. Why? Because as I've mentioned, cruise line excursions are pretty limited. Those popular excursions can sell out quickly and you don't want to miss out. I've personally had this happen. I've gone on a wait list. Sometimes I've had luck getting in an excursion, sometimes not. So if there's an excursion that you really wanna do, book in advance and book as early as possible. With cruise line excursions, you can technically book them on the ship, even sometimes the day of the excursion or the night before, but that's a big risk because at that point, you're only gonna get what's left over and those are usually not the hottest tickets in town. They're usually the excursions that nobody else wanted. So you can probably get a cruise line excursion at that point, but it might not be one that you want. Many cruise lines also allow you to cancel or change your excursion up to a certain point before you're sailing, so you do have a little bit of flexibility and leeway if your plans are to change. Now, if you're going the independent route, there are a few ways to go about doing it. One, you can research those independent tour providers online and book directly through them, usually on their websites. Another is you can book through an excursion company like Viator, Shore Trips, or TripAdvisor. I'll drop a couple of my links down in the description because these are the ones that I recommend because they generally do somewhat vet these tour providers and they offer some source of guarantees. Now with these websites, you can actually go online, research the excursion. I love them because you can check the ratings of other cruisers and make sure that you're not gonna buy an excursion that's a total dog. Now another option, I don't recommend this, is you can wait until you're at the port and book directly with the local operator. So basically you get off the ship, you get to the cruise terminal area, it's bustling, it's crowded. There are almost always some local operators or at a minimum drivers there with their signs offering to take you to the beach or to local destinations that are popular. And you can make a game day decision if you want to actually go to any of those places. You can haggle price. Often they'll only take cash. Sometimes they take card, but that's a much riskier venture because you might not be able to do the excursion that you want to do because it's sold out or unavailable. You also haven't had the opportunity to vet these vendors and you could end up with a shady character. Who knows? When it comes to timing, just like with the cruise line excursions, booking early is key, especially for those really popular or specialized activities. It's also important to consider your ship's itinerary and to do your research on port locations before you get there. Why? Because not all port locations really require an excursion. Some of them are fantastic destinations for a free beach day. Grand Turk is a great example. There's a lovely beach right there, right off the pier. You don't need an excursion. The private islands like Princess or Carnivals or Holland's Princess Key or Half Moon Key or Perfect Day at Coco Cay, which is Royal Caribbean's private island. You really don't need an excursion for those locations because again, it's a free beach day. So do your research on the port destination. I have lots of free port guides for all of the big ports on my blog at profmelissa.com. So look at your itinerary, examine those ports, figure out which ones need an excursion. Some of them do need an excursion, Costa Maya, Mexico, but some do not. You also want to evaluate how much time you're going to have at port. Grand Cayman, as just one example, is notorious for almost always being a super short call. I've done calls there that had about five, six hours really to spend there. So you don't wanna book an excursion that's really far away or it's gonna to take too much time because again, you don't wanna cut it close when it comes to getting back to the ship. And there you have it, your ultimate guide to cruise excursions. If you like what you've heard, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And always, of course, visit my blog at profmelissa.com for all kinds of great cruising information, including free port guides, advice, and everything else.